human beings since time immemorial immemorial have been in search of answers to three questions where have we come from where are we and where do we go from here till date despite lot of philosophical systems and religions that have come into being no one can answer this question with authority basically to answer these questions one has to inquire within himself because the answer doesn't lie outside whenever even when we see things that are lying outside ultimately it is the individual who perceives things without the individual who perceives things even if the things do exist outside we may not be able to perceive it so it is easier to check the instrument that perceives things to understand the universe better now to understand what is understanding understanding means to be aware the value judgment understanding that is to know fully what we want to know is understanding that is in depth is understanding but fundamentally speaking without these attributes whether it is a factual attribute or a judgmental attribute one has to be aware that is the basic function of every organism in the world to be aware itself is a knowledge whether it is a factual knowledge or an ethical judgment is determined by one's intellect in sanskrit it is called buddhi that whether it is correct by empirical sciences or empirical practices is determined by what we have as a system for instance we say three angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees the moment we come across something as 179 degrees in a triangle we say it is incorrect this is a factual judgment the other judgment is one we find somebody we say that someone is good someone is bad this is an ethical judgment this is being given by the intellect now let us keep this aside now to pass a judgment either factual or uh, ethical one has to know as i said earlier to know how do we know things we know things because we are aware of it that is to know things three things are necessary one is i have to be there let us call it as the subject then the thing i want to see should be there that is the object but merely if the subject and object were to be present the knowledge will awareness will not be complete they have to be connected for example if i have somebody who is not known to me also he exists he is out somewhere but unless i come to know him in person or heard of him and relate to himself i will not know about himself nor he of myself therefore any awareness or knowledge comes or possible only if the subject and object are related this is called s o s o r relation subject object relationship now how do we become aware of things we become aware of things one is by their being physically present that is pratyaksha that is we see them perception we see them we hear them we touch them and we smell things so through our five sensory organs and also mind mind i will deal with it later after some time because it is as called as a sense organ in hindu systems of thought whereas in the western system it is called as a substance a reality in its own right itself now only perception is the source of knowledge if you look at it very carefully it doesn't appear to be so because there are things which we have not seen however we know they are true and that knowledge is possible for example 
none of us have seen our great grandparents simply because we have not seen them we cannot deny that they existed that is you infer from the angle of biology that your great grandfather should have existed in one aspect it is called inference you infer certain things so there are certain things which happen in the world and we know that there should be a cause and this process this is another source of knowledge is inference there is another source of knowledge is the testimony not all things can be known by you some things you have to take somebody's word for granted so this is the testimony this is another source of knowledge the next source of knowledge is upamana that is you look at lot of things which you have not come across before if you want to understand them you have to relate them to things which you already know for example i have not been to us let me say now if somebody wants to explain how us looks like then what they would try to tell you the buildings which you have in us are 100% bigger than what you have disneyland is about 100 times bigger than uh, uh, the park which you find in hyderabad so similarly you try to understand things in the light of things you already know this is called upamana comparison there is yet another knowledge source of knowledge which is also accepted is intuition sometimes you get to know things directly by yourself without uh, the source of any of the things i have mentioned that is pratyaksha anumana inference and upamana so in addition to this there are lot of other sources in a sense our direct perception is not the only source of our being aware of things around us and also about us for instance you want to know what we talk about mind but how do we know that the mind exists we infer that the mind exists because we do not see it in fact technically speaking you don't see your own eyes you don't even see your own ears you don't see your back how do you know how do you say that they exist similarly you don't see electricity or gravitation how do you say it exists because you infer from the results that you are perceiving similarly when we see the universe here everything per running in a fixed order you always think that there is a cause for everything there should have been a cause something should have been there so that the search for the first cause the uncaused cause is the search of philosophy and this is also one of the one of the roots taken by the people to understand the to understand the answer to the queries where are we where have we come from where do we fo- from here so this search is essentially called a spirituality spirituality is that process where you try to find out the first cause or inquire into the nature of things as they exist many different names are given as ontology cosmology everything fundamentally you are looking for something which is more than what is your what is flesh and blood in the search as we have seen now one of the important source is testimony in indian system of thought vedas are called sabda pramana that is testimony vedas are a source of knowledge in the form of a testimony people who have preceded us in their quest to find the origin of things and progressed attempted the and attempted the process of spirituality they are called the rishis they followed certain procedures and they have understood they have come across certain procedures and they have been revealed in the form of vedas vedas are testimony they are taken as one of the sources of knowledge based on that we have 
lot of system existing in india philosophical system one is <coughs> veda is a sabda pramana and now veda alone veda themselves alone do not constitute the entire uh, philosophical systems of india we do have others sankhya yoga vnyaya vaisheshika puru mimamsa and of course uttara mimamsa is upanishad a part of veda so all these provide a guide post for seeker so vedas refrain from saying that you have to follow only vedas and not anything else as many number of human being exist in this world there are as many paths available for self realization or in common parlance to know god so with this the entire system of indian philosophy works now in this quest for finding out reality the rishis have found that there is an underlying unifying principle this principle is beyond attributes called nirguna brahman that is the qualities the qualities of which essentially are sat chit ananda being consciousness or pure knowledge and bliss in addition to that the other qualities are called an avaktavya that is they are indescribable but in an attempt to understand this they have start they have described it in the form of neti 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 that is mean it is not this it is not this that is they say it is neither big nor small nor in between neither tall nor short nor in between neither everywhere nor nowhere so this might look uh, a high sounding nonsense but in fact when you start stripping of these qualities there is a substratum that lies between all these things this is what the vedas describe so to understand the reality one has to look as i said elsewhere in the beginning of this uh, speech you have to look in words why look the looking in words uh, is called meditation this looking in words process that is meditation is possible only when focuses one's intellect there is another level in indian philosophy which is higher than uh, buddhi that is uh, intellect is called chitta how to enable the chitta to focus upon meditation in the process of realizing the supreme self or brahman or the unchanging eternal boundless reality one process is to meditate upon the nirguna that is attributeless it's not correct to say attributeless the reality which is beyond attributes which is beyond our grasp that is called the nirguna vasana second is indian seekers have found out that it is very difficult to concentrate on a simple principle and so they have devised a system of giving name and form to these principles and the uh, different gods have come into being with attributes being ascribed to it an individual is made up of lot of predisposition lot of personal likes and dislikes someone likes mother someone likes father someone likes teacher someone like a lover husband wife and it the list goes on you your mind gets focused on the things you like even uh, if it is going to be something which you like to eat so the process of understanding the universe the first cause of understanding can be known with more focus only when you select something which you like most as the source or focus of meditation so the gods of names and form have been sanctioned in indian system of philosophy but is this going to be useful yes in the sense that just as you get phd or a doctorate or a, a mbbs doctor or a scientist you need to go through the process of lkg or pre kg once you reach the topmost position of your academic 
excellent, the LKG may sound to be useless, but without that you would not have reached this place. So, in Saguna Aradhana also, as you go and start developing yourself spiritually, you will straight away realize the Parabrahman and the Saguna Aradhana may drop from your side. Therefore, the Saguna Aradhana is prescribed. The Saguna Aradhana, that is worshipping of names and God, are done through either Stotras or Suktas or, <coughs> through, uh, or through Veda Mantras. These, these are one of these processes, this, this uh, recitation of mantras. And these mantras are uh, embedded in a spiritual way and they have been grasped from the ether by the rishis. One such is three Vishnu Sahasranama. This is what we will be uh, discussing about in the uh, lectures to come by, analyzing the three Vishnu Sahasranama word by word and explaining them with reference to various systems of Indian philosophy, Western thought and also interpret them in the light of modern science including quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics. In the next class, we will be looking at how the worship of God or individual God will not be at variance with the established law of karma as advocated by Hinduism. So, this will be a series of lectures which will be I will be uploading in my site www.ramanisblog.in to join the class as WhatsApp a plus subscriber 9184905 91538 one hour lecture at gmail.com thank you and look and i will be posting the lecture